true Bushido is not about throwing yourself into a reckless battle and dying, but to always make the decision that's right, even if it's hard. And welcome to Let's Ask Shogo. I'm very happy to announce that I'm going to be starting a new series. Movie reviews from Japan. I decided to start this series because there were many people asking me about recommended movies, and I thought that watching movies is a very fun way to study about Japanese history and culture too. When I wondered which movie I should start with, The Last Samurai immediately came to my mind. Even though it is a movie made in 2003, There are quite a lot of people asking me about my opinions about it, so here I go. I will first briefly introduce the story and then share my personal opinions. At the end of the video, I would like to introduce a few reviews posted by other Japanese audiences to share different points of view. In this channel, I'll be reviewing movies related to Japanese history and culture. If you want to study about Japan through movies, Be sure to subscribe to enjoy more content. So, let's go to the next one. The Then, first, I will start from briefly explaining the plot of the movie. It was the time of the Meiji Restoration, or in other words, westernization in Japan in the late 19th century. The 250 years of long peace during the Edo period was broken by the US coming to Japan with their latest technology and weaponry, and forcing the Japanese government to quit their isolation policies and open their ports for the US to use. The samurai government easily signed a treaty letting the US use their ports, approving consular court and relinquishing tariff autonomy. The samurai working for the government were, of course, not satisfied with this, knowing that the government they've worked for for generations were such cowards. The samurai clans formed alliances with each other and destroyed the former samurai government and established a new westernized government of their own. However, there were other samurai who were with tearing down the former shogunate. But were not aiming for westernization nor the end of the samurai system. Those who were hoping to rapidly westernize Japan and build their strong position in the new Meiji government were sick of Katsumoto, the leader of the formal samurai, who insisted on keeping the ways things were. They went to America in search of an instructor to train their men into a strong modern military to fight with Katsumoto. This is where they would meet the main character of the story, Captain Nathan Algren. Nathan Algren was known as a hero in America who fought in the American Civil War against the Native Americans. However, in one of the battles, he was forced to kill tons of innocent women and children. He quits the army as he starts to have nightmares about the terrible experience. And becomes addicted to alcohol. However, he accepted the offers of the Japanese businessmen to train their army because of the unbelievably large amount of rewards they presented. Nathan Algren heads to Japan, and there he will meet the samurai leader Katsumoto on the battlefield. Will the samurai be able to protect their culture from the rapid change of history? What is Bushido? The moral code of the samurai? And how will it change the minds of Nathan Algren that are suffering from his regrets? I hope you can actually watch the movie to find out their destiny. This story is based on a true war that happened in 1877 called the Seinan Senso, Seinan War. However, the last samurai leader was not Katsumoto, but a man called Saigo Takamori. And the foreign army soldier that fought with them was not from America but from France, called Drew Burnet. I'm very sure I didn't pronounce that correctly. 
Next, let me share with you my review of this movie by focusing on three points. One, the scene of the last battle is the ideal Bushido. Two, the characters are actually played by Japanese. Three, the action scenes are too Hollywood. One, the scene of the last battle is the ideal Bushido. I don't want to spoil too much of the story for those of you who haven't seen the movie yet, but the climax scene of the last battle between the new westernized government of Japan and the formal samurai is very touching. I tear up a little bit every time I watch. You can feel the film director's respect towards the way of the samurai, and it expresses the complicated emotions of the Japanese people at that time. Many of the soldiers who were fighting to promote westernization had some sort of sorrow towards the end of their original culture. They did not hate or completely deny their identity. However, they chose the path of modernization because they believed that that was the best way to protect Japan. There is no evil, just two justices, both caring about the future of Japan, fighting each other. The finale mashes up all these emotions to make one moving scene. If you want to deepen your understanding of what Bushido is, watching this movie might give you a clear image. Two, the characters are actually played by Japanese. Another point that I love about this movie is that although it's a Hollywood movie, Japanese roles are played by Japanese actors. You might think that's pretty obvious, but it's something that's very, very rare. I would say that about 90% of Hollywood movies use actors from China, Korea, or American Japanese. There is hardly anyone who speaks proper Japanese. However, in this movie, there are absolutely no strange points in their Japanese. And the scenes where the Japanese talk with each other is very realistic because their pronunciations are correct. I can definitely recommend this movie to those who are studying Japanese. Even the extras playing as soldiers on each army are all Japanese actors too. It seems that the movie staff were originally planning to use either Korean actors because they wanted to hire people with military experience or Japanese Americans who are more familiar with guns. However, because many people, including Tom Cruise, were against this, they hired 500 Japanese people and they trained them from scratch in New Zealand. Three, the action scenes are too Hollywood. But of course, there are some parts of the movie that puzzle me. The action scenes in the movie. They're a little bit too Hollywood and Tom Cruise-y. The actual samurai hardly used two swords at once. But in this movie, there are quite a few scenes where they do. There are many samurai that defeat gun-armed soldiers with bows and arrows, which I think is definitely impossible. And the worst part would surely be the scene where a group of ninja comes to attack Katsumoto and his men at night. Who hired these ninja to attack the samurai? after the samurai government was gone? And why would they try to fight them face to face without even trying to do a sneak attack, which is supposed to be the ninja's main tactic if they ever were to fight someone? You shouldn't use the last samurai as material on studying about how the samurai and ninja fought in the past. Now, if the story plots were completely fictional, this wouldn't bother me. But I guess because the story is based on historical facts, and the way they express the mind of Bushido is so beautiful, the strangeness of the action scenes stands out even more. But of course, there are many theories on how the samurai and ninja actually fought, and it's of course okay to make them fancy in order to impress the audience. It happens even in the traditional stage arts in Japan, that has a history of over 600 years. Pursuing historical accuracy is not always correct. As an overall review, 
I personally will give this movie a 4 star rating out of 5. Then lastly, let's take a look at some reviews other people wrote about this movie to deepen our understanding towards this movie. These are some of the interesting opinions that I found. 1. We have to accept that this is how we are seen from foreign countries. 2. This movie is a strange mix of the Sengoku era and the Edo period. 3. True Bushido would have chosen not to fight. 1. We have to accept that this is how we are seen from foreign countries. If you take a look at the Japanese reviews, you will immediately find out that even those who are giving a 5 star rating to this movie all state that this is a samurai fantasy. It is very obvious that the story this movie tells is very different from actual history, and that the action scenes, for example, are not very accurate. However, many Japanese people say that we must accept that this is what foreign countries imagine of us. And as a fictional story, this movie is a masterpiece. I too would like to say to those who are writing negative reviews that it's the Japanese fault too. If people outside of Japan are misunderstanding our culture, if we had more language and communication skills, if we put more effort in spreading the real history and culture to the world, I think the situation would have been different. It's very embarrassing and pathetic to make it all Hollywood's fault and not take any responsibility for the misunderstandings. 2. This movie is a strange mix of the Sengoku era and the Edo period. Next, someone explained that the samurai in this movie are a strange mix of the Sengoku era and the Edo period. And I thought that this is probably the best way to express the awkwardness of their clothes and weaponry. The Sengoku era and the end of the Edo period are the most popular time periods in Japanese history, even among the Japanese too. It's because these two periods are both the time of turbulence in Japan, and there were many famous samurai and historical battles that took place. In other words, they are the eras that make drama and cool video games. So in this movie too, you can understand that in order to impress the audience, or due to the movie director's preference, there are many things that shouldn't be the way they are despite the movie being based after the Edo period. For example, the armor the samurai are wearing. Many point out that the kind of armor the characters are wearing in the movie are the ones that have been worn during the Sengoku era. If you take a look at these pictures of the Seinan War, you can understand that they were hardly wearing any armor in the first place. Also, the usage of bows and arrows as their main long-range weapon is strange too, because from the Sengoku era, samurai were already using firearms. As I've explained in this video talking about Kudo, the bow martial art in Japan, by the Edo period, Japanese archery had already shifted into a way for samurais to train their minds and not to be used as weapons. It might make the samurai look more samurai-ish and fancy, but in reality, it would have been different. 3. True Bushido would have chosen not to fight. Lastly, this is the most interesting opinion that I found. True Bushido is not about throwing yourself into a reckless battle and dying, but to always make the decision that's right, even if it's hard. It's true that this movie gives the impression that samurai were almost crazy people with no brains, who are simply wanting to die by fighting a battle that's impossible to win. Some people who have watched this movie say that they don't want foreigners watching this movie to believe that Japanese are all positive about disregarding life, like how the kamikaze pilots did in World War II. Someone pointed out that Katsumoto should have committed harakiri to protect his men, 
and not let them die in battle and waste their lives. That would have been a much better decision as a samurai. Of course, there is no answer to Bushido. All of it is just personal speculation. But for me, it was an eye-opener because it was something that never crossed my mind. Overall, the rating of this movie is 4.4 stars out of 5 on Amazon Prime, with more than 2,500 reviews, which is a very, very high review. Then lastly, today's conclusion. The plot of the movie goes like this. It was a time of westernization of Japan, and there was much chaos within the country. Once the formal samurai government was overthrown, there were samurai who still wanted to keep the system and rules the way they were. The new Meiji government that was supporting westernization moved to America to find a leader that will train their men to defeat Katsumoto, the leader of the formal samurai who was getting in their way. Nathan Algren, played by Tom Cruise, accepts this offer, and in the battlefield of Japan, he will beat Katsumoto. How will Bushido change Nathan Algren's fate? My review of this movie is 1. The scene of the last battle is the ideal Bushido. 2. The characters are actually played by Japanese. 3. The action scenes are too Hollywood. Taking a look at how they express the way of the samurai, and considering that they actually hire Japanese actors, you can understand the respect from the movie director. However, for those of you who are looking for content to study about the samurai and ninja's battle style or weaponry, I cannot recommend this movie in terms of accuracy. These are some interesting reviews by others who have seen this movie. One, we have to accept that this is how we are seen from foreign countries. Two, it's a strange mix of the Sengoku era and Edo period. Three, true Bushido who have chosen not to fight. Most Japanese say that it's a very enjoyable movie as a samurai fantasy. The armor and weaponry that appear in the movie are a strange combination of the two most popular eras in Japanese history, the Sengoku era and the Edo period, which are two very different time periods. Some people pointed out that they don't want people watching this movie to think that Japanese people all worship the idea of recklessly throwing away lives. True Bushido is about always doing what's right, and that sometimes includes staying alive and enduring the pains of life. So that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching. If this video made you want to watch The Last Samurai again, please hit the like button to let me know. And my goal is to achieve 1 million subscribers by January 2023, so your help is what I need. In this channel, you can take a closer look at Japanese traditional culture, tips on traveling to Kyoto, and social problems in Japan. So learners and lovers of Japanese language and culture, be sure to subscribe to enjoy more content. And please check out our new sub-channel and membership in the description box. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next movie review. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next movie reviews from Japan. Domo, arigatouzaimashita. Everyone, once again, thank you very much for watching this video, and welcome to the Market Talk. So this was my first video for the movie reviews from Japan series. I hope you enjoyed it. And for those of you who are looking forward to it, um, thank you very much for waiting. I hope you enjoyed it too. All right. So in today's Omaka talk, I just wanted to explain that, you know, in the last half of the video, I introduced one of the reviews that I found of written by other people, especially the last one, you know, that Katsumoto should have committed Harakiri to protect his men, and that would be like the real Bushido, and I was like very surprised about it, right? Um, I just wanted to tell you one thing, that um, in real life, I told you that the real last samurai was called Saigo Takamori, right? Um, the real person, Saigo Takamori, actually did what Katsumoto did in the movie. So he actually fought against the new government leading young 
um, samurai and his own students. He actually runs some schools at that time. He led his students and young samurai into a reckless battle that there was no way they could win. So in a way, um, The Last Samurai of the movie is actually based on true facts again. So the review, I, I introduced it as if it was really something really um, rare and special, but actually um, if you take a look at the facts, historical facts, the movie is actually very accurate, yes. I just wanted to explain this to you. But um, slightly, slightly there are of course different. Um, Saigo Takamori, the real Last Samurai, um, his attitude towards the last battle, I believe as a student of history of samurai history, would have been a little bit different. Um, Saigo Takamori, the last samurai, he actually, I believe, as far as I've studied, he probably did not want to start a fight actually with the new government because he was actually the one to, one of the people, one of the great men that built the new government actually. So, but um, he wasn't able to suppress the anger um, that the, the samurai and the young people had. In in a way, there was he was it was impossible for him to avoid the battle, and he couldn't just let them die, you know, without his lead. So it's it's a little bit more complicated. Um, I'm actually going to be making a video soon more about Saigo Takamori and the history of how the samurais ended. So I hope you can look forward to this. I just wanted to tell you about the real history, and the movie is actually more related. And the review was interesting, but um, it's different from the real history and what happened in actual facts. I just wanted to tell you about this. And I hope you can look forward to the new movie series coming out from this month or maybe next month. Uh, the next one is going to be um, talking about a movie about Oirang and Yukaku, which um, some mo I made some videos about. So I hope you can look forward to this too. Alright everyone, once again, thank you very much for watching. Arigatou gozaimashita!